Today we are going to look at the Denon DA300 USB DAC. This is a DAC and a headphone amplifier, but the DAC section is generally regarded as being superior to the headphone amplifier. This is a quite a good quality unit. It's well built, so it has a lot of features, and it's if you can find it, it's often available for a very good price on the used market compared to its competitors. So let's look at first we're gonna look inside and then let's discuss the sound quality and also some interesting things that I've observed during its product life cycle. On the back we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve screws. This unit is quite hard to get into. Um, after removing the rear screws, you can kind of lever up some of the, the top half of the case, but it's still attached at the front. So it appears that there's plastic clips which need to be unclipped, and it's quite difficult without doing any damage. And it also appears that the shiny front screen needs to be it's stuck on with adhesive that it needs to be um, removed. So I'm using a knife to help lever it off. It seems to be unsticking, which reveals further screws inside, which will let me remove the case. And behind the front facade, we can see the OLED display and also the capacitive touch sensor for the input selection on the front. After removing six further screws at the front, the case now comes off quite easily and we can check inside. So Denon's website advertises this as having seven separate circuit boards inside, seven separate PCBs, and if we count closely, there are seven PCBs inside. We have the um, capacitive touch sensor from the front, and I suspect that is an accelerometer chip. Um, there's the this one here, which I guess is a digital control board, or maybe a power supply. I'm not quite sure. We have the main board, um, then we've also got four more around the front area. We have one for the power button, we have one for the OLED display, we have another one here which I, some kind of transformer, and we have another one here which is connected to the headphone out socket. Okay, everything is finally apart. As you can see, there's a lot of components in this DAC. I first want to look at the chassis. You can see that the plastic um, cover has a very thick steel plate mounted underneath it. And also for the other cover, both the top and bottom covers have a very thick steel plate. If I put this on the scales, it's half a kilogram just for the cover. So most of the weight comes from these two very thick um, steel plates, which is good because it helps reduce um, vibrations and it also helps the quality of the sound. Okay, let's see how heavy it is. It's about 1.5 kilograms, not the lightest of units. So here are the seven circuit boards. We have, well, first of all, here is the um, touch sensor for the input selector at the front. This is behind the front panel. We have the uh, 
uh, DSP board. Um, this is a very interesting board. It has the USB input and also the power input. So I assume they are using this board to do all the noisy digital um, processing. There's a lot of uh, components on here. There's an Altera Cyclone 4 FPGA. There's also a Texas Instruments chip, which I assume is a DSP chip. That's a BGA mounted chip. There's also another Texas Instruments chip. On the flip side, here is an ST Electronics, what I assume is an um, ARM microcontroller. 32F100. And there's another IC over here. I don't know what this is. And it connects to the main board by a connector. After this connector, there's a lot of isolation. I assume these are the opto isolators that uh, T um, Denon mentions on the website. Over here is the very brown uh, DAC chip. I am not sure what this board is. I, it appears to have a transformer and there's a logo that says SET. And also on the transformer has SET. Um, here is the headphone output which connects to the headphone jack through a um, cable with a ferrite bead. Um, there are any components on here? There's a couple. And there's your 6.5, no, 6.25 headphone connector. And over here, there's your RCA line out. And also your SPDIF inputs. But you can see that there's very thick um, separated area on the PCB where I assume these um, SPDIF inputs feed through onto the DSP board. And after they are processed, then they would obviously come through this isolation circuitry to the analog stage after the that chip and then to the analog output. These are Alma and Silmuk capacitors. So these are good quality components that they are using on this circuit board. Um, yeah, Alna and and each of these other electrolytic capacitors the, seems to be the same. Behind this board there is not much to see. You can see that the digital section is separated from the analog side. And there's this 7805 regulator and I cannot figure out what is behind it. There appears to be a rubber um, device behind it, a pad of some kind. It's mounted in a strange way and I can only assume it's to control vibration because it doesn't appear to be used for heat dissipation. So the sound quality is quite good. I don't have other similar DACs at this price point to compare it with. 
However, I will describe what I hear on my system. I'm testing this with a Myriad Z142 amplifier and also Proac Tablet 10 bookshelf speakers. I'll say it sounds good. So with the sound, maybe I, I I'll start by describing the, the things I don't like about the sound. I notice on some tracks there's a certain harshness or brightness with the upper mid-range the presence region and this is when it happens it's most noticeable on like synth strings there's a certain hardness that comes through also the bass is not as hard hitting and punchy as you would like it to be both these things are very minor in the overall picture of things the good thing about this DAC is that it doesn't make your music sound bad if you have a bad recording. Port recordings are very listenable and Denon's AL32 processing system, DSP system, actually does seem to work. I have quite a few MP3s that are not well recorded at all and my speakers are fairly revealing and they are quite listenable, which is one of the reasons I chose to buy this DAC. Now, I will say that this is a good sounding DAC. I can easily spend a long time listening to music and just be completely absorbed in it. And it is very, it's very satisfying to listen to. Um, I know that I did mention some areas of the sound which I don't necessarily like, but I think that has to be put in the right context that this is a very good DAC and it's even with those deficiencies it's still going to be head and shoulders above many other um, cheaper DACs like for example a Dragonfly or a IDSD Nano or one of the other cheaper entry level DACs. When shopping for a DAC I was comparing this DAC with the Chord Mojo the Marantz HD DAC 1 and the iFi iDAC 2. Now these other DACs I think are roughly in the same league in terms of sound quality. From other reviews that I've read they the sound is roughly of a similar level and if you go to either one of these DACs it's more of a side grade than an upgrade. Perhaps maybe the Marantz HD DAC 1 is slightly better overall, but that's also reflected in its price, which is higher than the other DACs. But I don't think there's a whole lot in it. So if you're looking for a Chord Mojo, or some other DAC around that um, level of quality, this is a very good contender. From reading online, it seems that this DAC has a fairly well implemented input section and it doesn't matter so much what streamer you use or what um, input you use with it, even if you have a fairly noisy computer USB output, it's still going to sound relatively good compared to other DACs. The Chord Mojo, for instance, is known to have a fairly poor USB implementation and if you don't have a USB cleaner or reclocker or a USB power cleaner in your signal chain it's not going to sound as good as it could and likewise the iFi iDAC 2 so similar story to make it sound good you need to have some kind of USB signal regenerator in your system chain however with the Denon, there's a lot more isolation circuitry in it. From what I read, it seems like they've done a better job with that side of things, which is another one of the reasons I chose to purchase this DAC. If you find one of these for sale on the used market, it is often a lot cheaper than the competitors that I mentioned that are roughly in the same level of sound quality. I think there are a number of reasons for this. Firstly, Denon as a brand is quite popular in Europe but not so popular for hi-fi products in the western world so when this pops up for sale in the used market people people may not be interested in it 
Secondly, during the life cycle of this deck, it seemed to be heavily discounted when it was sold new toward the end of its lifespan. Perhaps this has impacted the price on the used market. And thirdly, I think the reviews that I've read, many of them seem to focus more on the headphone output. And the headphone output is okay. It's not amazing, but it's definitely not in the same league in terms of sound quality as the DAC itself. And I think because of this fact, and it was reviewed more as a headphone amp than a DAC, um, I think perhaps those reviews have led people to perhaps not realize what a good unit this is just for a DAC. So should you buy this DAC? It has a lot of features. It's well built. It uses quality components inside. It has a lot of digital inputs. It has a headphone output with volume control. It has a display. It makes sense for my use case. And it seems to be that some of the other DACs that are comparable in sound quality aren't as well-rounded as a product overall. They lack the display or they lack some inputs or they lack the quality of the USB input section or they don't necessarily impact the sound quality, but they make your quality of life easier than owning this DAC. So if you can find it for a reasonable price, I would recommend it as a good choice. You may need to buy it, see how the sound signature matches your system and your tastes, but I think you will be quite happy with it, providing you are not expecting it to move mountains. So it does have a OLED display on the front, which shows you the sample rate, the input, and the volume. Um, there's an accelerometer inside which can detect what orientation to put the display in. It is an OLED display and OLED displays wear out over time and suffer burn-in. And you'll see that if I change the input to a different input, you will see the imprints that the display has left. So you can see the laptop screen is kind of imprinted on this picture because I always leave the laptop, the computer, the USB input connected. You can kind of see the lines very faintly on this one, but more easily on this one. The display shows the sample rate when I play music, which is very handy if you are trying to debug your setup. Um, it can... There's also a volume control and a headphone out. That's a large uh, 6.25 connector, which fits snugly. The volume is not for the line out, it is for the headphone only. And the volume is shown. It's an infinite style. Control.